Welcome guys, I'm Exosta and in today's video we are going to do something different. We are going to challenge the new artificial intelligence chat GPT with Path of Exile. Uh, now, for those of you who have been living under a rock for the last months, uh, ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence based on a language model that basically answers all of your textual questions. Um, it is a very impressive technology, to say the least, and some researchers and scientists had fun submitting multiple choice questions uh, to this artificial intelligence, as they would do to their students in the university. And uh, some results were rather impressive. Uh, in astrophysics exams, ChatGPT GP uh, obtained uh, an average score very similar to the one of the average student. Uh, so I figured uh, what could happen if uh, I submitted multiple choice questions to uh, ChatGPT Chat about uh, Path of Excel instead of uh, some more serious uh, stuff and uh, so this is uh, the website ChatGPT. I prepared uh, some multiple choice questions divided by topic. Uh, the first topic I want to address is economy and itemization. Not all questions will be very hard. For example, this first question here is very simple. Uh, which is the rarest currency item to drop from monsters in Path of Excel? And the answer is correct. It is as you all know by now, the Mirror of Calandra. Uh, as you see, uh, the answers are usually pretty detailed and uh, um, if the, this artificial intelligence tries to give you uh, uh, an extensive explanation of uh, any answer uh, it might give you. Uh, now to the following question. Which of these currency items has a blue colored icon? And here is a mistake because the currency item with a blue colored icon between these four is the Orb of Annulment, um, as you can see inside uh, my currency stash tab. And this uh, ChatGPT got confused, probably because uh, when ChatGPT looks for images on the internet, it looks for um, images uh, in game, uh, which feature different loot filters which may have uh, a different color for icons. Um, it takes right the Ancient Orb color, but it fails on the Val Orb and the Orb of Annulment. Uh, Exalted Orb is obviously not blue, it's more like yellow or golden. Uh, to the next question. How many screaming essences are required for upgrading to a deafening essence in Puff of Excel? The answer is correct, it is 9 because 3 screaming upgrades to a shrieking, 3 shrieking uh, can be upgraded to become a deafening essence. That's correct. Um, which of these divination cards rewards all the chance in Puff of Excel? And the answer is again correct, it is the fool, but uh, the problem is that uh, it the, the explanation is kind of wrong because uh, the set is made of seven cards and you want to receive five orbs of chance, uh, more like uh, 20 orbs of chance. Mm, but whatever, the answer was correct nonetheless. How much maximum life does Legacy Comes Heart body armor provide in Path of Excel? Uh, the answer is again correct, it is 1000 maximum life. This is a very old uh, legacy item which was released in during beta and uh, it went legacy before the game launched. So there are very few copies of this right now. Uh, anyway, this is not a great body armor anymore because, you know, rare modifiers are usually more valuable than just flat 1000 maximum life. Uh, anyway, it seems to me like uh, ChatGPT can check for uh, content inside the POE wiki, uh, but not in an extremely accurate way. It can still go mistaken, for example, in the question about divination cards. Let's, let's check the next one. Which of these unique items provides the highest potential value of increased quantity of items found? And here are the four options, Goldworm, Viscous Leash, Grease Embrace, and, and Hunter. Now, 
um Ed Hunter is obviously the wrong answer here. It doesn't provide quantity at all. Maybe you can get 5% quantity from implicit, but that's not something you really expect in your build. Uh, the correct answer was actually <clears throat> uh, Goldwyrm, because you can get up to 20% quantity of items found from that boot, from those boots. Uh, Viscous Leash can only provide 5%, 10% if you account for corruption implicit, and Grease Embrace is only 15% quantity at best. Uh, so yeah, the answer here, uh, here is wrong. It somehow thinks that uh, Headhunter can steal quantity from monsters, which is not really the case, but it would be funny nonetheless. So let's try the same question, but uh, about rarity. Ventus Gamble is the unique item that provides the highest potential value of the increased variety of items found? No, that's false. That's unvarious. Um, because Ventus Gamble can provide up to 55% um, rarity, 40% from the explicits, 15% from the gold ring base. Unvarious is also a gold ring, so it has 15% implicit, but it also comes with 70% rarity from the explicit modifiers. Uh, so yeah, mm, it seems to me that mm, ChatGPT has some problems checking for specific modifiers on unique items uh, and it is not as accurate as um, we would expect uh, in this regard. Which of these unique items was previously nerfed in Path of Exile? Now, this is another hard one because you need to check all of these uniques and the nerfs that happened over time. All of the listed unique items have been nerfed. No, that's false. Uh, Adapter was kind of nerfed and buffed over time, depending on the rare monsters. Um, Queen of the Forest was nerfed due to its high evasion rate. That's true. Um, presence of Chayula and the aesthetic were never nerfed. Uh, so yeah, this is another this is another mistake. So it really can't recognize um, these uh, modifiers uh, on unique items, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, now, um, at last, for the itemization, uh, just an open question: Why are the mine orbs more expensive than exalted orb in Path of Exile? As you see, they Explanation is quite long. Let's see what it came out with. Uh, divine orbs are more expensive than exalted orbs because they are rarer and have a narrower and more specific use case. Mm. Let's see what what's the follow up. Divine orbs are used to reroll the values of all explicit mods on a piece of rare equipment to new random values within the same tier. That's correct. While preserving the crafted mods and the number of sockets and links. Fine. This makes them highly sought after for players who want to improve the roles on their best in slot items or for those who want to craft specific mods on their gear. That's kind of accurate, but it didn't really uh, hit the mark uh, as so far. On the other hand, Exalted Orbs are more commonly used and they have a wider range of uses. Yeah, sure. Exalted Orbs are used to add a new random affix for an item. They can also be used to buy other valuable items from other suppliers. That's not updated. Uh, the orbs are now the standard for current for trading in general. They are considered one of the main currencies in the game's economy. That's outdated again. Overall, the relative scarcity and specific use case of divine orbs make them more expensive in the game's economy. That's uh, a kind of lacking answer because. You have to remember that ChatGPT uh, have some troubles um, with processing questions about uh, 2022 and 2023. Uh, that's because ChatGPT was developed before 2021. Uh, so yeah, this was kind of a hard question for him. Uh, it can still find uh, data about 2022 onwards, but uh, it might be a bit uh, messy, as we just saw. Now, let's go to another topic, mapping and bossing. Which map between these as a linear layout in Path of Excel 
Strand map is a linear layout that's correct. Uh, the map consists of a long straight path with occasional branching paths that lead to small side areas. Uh, well, not sure about that. This makes it popular for players who want to quickly clear maps and farm for items and experience. Maze map, precinct, and vault temple are have more complex and maze-like layouts, which can make them more challenging to navigate and clear efficiently. That's correct. That's a good answer. Now, the next one will be a bit harder. What type of league encounter drops mirror shards in Path of Exile? And here is the first mistake here on this section. Bridge encounters drop from drop mirror shards, that's completely false. Uh, Harbinger encounters do. Um, I don't know where it did it take this answer specifically. Uh, this is uh, a very bad answer. Which boss does drop the Indigon in Path of Exile? So it uh, it finds it is it tells that it's the Uber Elder, which would be the correct answer. But it says it's a unique staff. It's not really a staff. It's uh, a helmet. Uh, so yeah, mm, the answer was correct. The explanation not quite. What country do you need to farm to obtain the rippling thought unique in Path of Exile? This is a bit hard. Um, a unique legion item falls. Um, yeah, the legion, this is not a legion item. This is an item from the beachhead and it is, and it is created by uh, putting together three pieces that drop from the uh, beachhead boss. Yeah, that was a hard one, uh, it failed. The, hard, the next one is also kind of hard. Um, which is the condition to enable tainted oil drops in a bladed map in Path of Exile? The correct answer is map must be corrupted, but uh, unfortunately ChatGPT uh, doesn't think so. It thinks that map must be just anointed. Uh, which is just uh, not the case. Um, where can you drop the Doctor Termination card in Path of Exile? The answer is correct, it is Burial Chamber, uh, and it also describes why the Doctor card is valuable. It's because of the Hydanter reward system, the reward, uh, but uh, uh, it uh, mistakes the tier of the map, it is not a tier 3 map anymore, uh, but it's fine. Another divination card question. Where can you drop the Sephiroth divination card in Path of Exile? And the answer is not correct. Um, the correct answer is Villa map. Because uh, the boss, Dominus boss, usually drops the Sephiroth card. Too bad, let's go on. Which of these is an elevated sextant in Path of Exile? And the answer is correct, this was a hard one. Ares contained three extra strong boxes in an elevated sextant modifier. Um, sextants are a type of currency that can be applied to maps on the last of worlds in order to modify them with various effects. That's correct. Um, and again, there seems to be some misunderstanding about sextants here because it still reminds of apprentice sextants which were the white sextants from very long ago uh, from before 2021 uh, nowadays we only have uh, awakened and elevated sextants but the answer again was correct so this one is a very uh, asked question in my Discord Magic Find Academy, which is more important to get the highest amount of life force in harvest. Most of pack size is the most important factor, that's true, for getting the highest amount of life force in harvest. Harvest is a league mechanic that involves planting seeds, harvesting them for life, and having a higher monster pack size can increase the number of monsters that are present and provide more opportunities to obtain life force 
While item quantity and item rarity can also increase the amount of rogues and rewards obtained, they do not directly affect the amount of life force obtained. Uh, actually, that's not quite true, uh, because item quantity uh, can indeed affect uh, life force, uh, in particular the stack size of the single uh, stacks of life force that drop. But again, this is uh, recent knowledge, not before 2021. Now uh, let's talk about crafting, uh, which is something that many players find very hard. So let's see if ChatGPT can be of any help here. Which currency item can you use to remove a modifier from a rare item? This is a very, very easy question, and the answer is correct. It is the Orb of Annulment. Now to a bit harder question. Which currency item can you use to merge two conquered influence modifiers into a rare, modify, into a rare item? The answer is again correct, it is the Awakener's Orb. And now let's go even further with the difficulty. What item level do you need on a bow to roll the modifier, bow attacks, fires, two additional arrows in Path of Excel? Now this is a, 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 an answer you can't get on the Path of Excel wiki. You need to check in the Craft of Excel website or in the POE database website. And the answer is not correct, uh, and to be honest, uh, it isn't even an option from our multiple choice. Uh, the correct answer is 86, 86 item level. But whatever, this is, was honestly a very hard question. Uh, the next one should be a bit easier. Uh, which Conqueror influence do you need to roll uh, the, mo the modifier enemies you kill at percent a chance to explode? The answer is wrong. It is not the Redeemer influence, it's the Crusader influence. Again, it seems to me that ChatGPT cannot really check for specific data in certain websites. It kind of struggles with it. Which of these essences can you apply to Red Ring to determinately obtain the modifier critical strike multiplier? This is something you can look at in the POE wiki, I think. And the answer is correct. It is the def deafening essence of scorn. So uh, I must say, <laughs> ChatGPT has good knowledge about essences in general. Which Delve resonator is needed to fit three fossils inside in Puff of Excel? The answer is powerful chaotic resonator. That's correct. Uh, which of these anointments uh, for amulets require three silver oils? And unfortunately, the correct answer was sovereignty, uh, not prismatic skin. Um, but that's fine, that was not an easy answer. Again, it's something you can only find um, in POE database. I'm not even sure you can get this knowledge from the POE wiki, uh, unless you open certain spoilers, which I'm pretty confident ChatGPT won't be able to do anyway. Which crafting method could I use to deterministically create a rare body armor with the two item modifiers, attack have critical strike chance, and socket gems are supported by level rarity? This is a very common craft for magic fine builds. You basically want to merge these two powerful modifiers to obtain uh, a playable body armor uh, for your character. So the first thing is to start with a high item level Body armor base, that's correct. Um, use cha Chaos Orb or an Exalted Orb to draw socketed gems are supported by level rarity. Okay, you can use Chaos Orbs. I don't see why you would use Exalted, to be honest. Um, Essence of Greed is quite bad here. Essences are useless in this uh, at this time of the craft of, of the crafting technique. Mm. Well, Orb of Anumad is also don't, not needed unless you get other Conqueror modifiers or Influence modifiers, that's fine. After that, you can use Hunter's Exalted Orb to add the attacks that, that's completely false. You cannot add the uh, Hunter specific modifier. You must use um, an Awakener's Orb to merge two items with the two modifiers and put them together. Uh, the follow-up, um, the follow-up steps 
are completely fucked up, uh, they make zero sense whatsoever. So, yeah. Mm, the answer was rather unsatisfying. I must admit that's really complex to explain a crafting method like that. Uh, I appreciate, appreciate the bullet point it made, but uh, yeah, they are just not correct. Crafting is a very complex uh, and tedious uh, aspect of Half of Exile for many players. It would have been fun to have <laughs> some help from the chatbot, but uh, I don't think this knowledge can be acquired from the internet very easily. Uh, there is not such explanation on how to create body armors or any gear at all in the POE wiki, not even in the POE database. Uh, there are some guides over the internet, but they are mostly YouTube videos, a uh, complex spreadsheet on Google, and yeah, those are not really documents that uh, ChatGPT could analyze in a, a feasible way. Let's go to the next one. Which crafting method could I use to deterministically create an endgame rare bow with physical damage in Path of Exile? Now, this is again another attempt uh, at checking how good ChatGPT can perform when it comes to crafting. Uh, so it, it picks the item level bow, that's fine. Use an orb of alchemy, okay. Use a blessed orb to increase the item's implicit physical damage modifier. That's not f doable. Mm, simply, you don't have implicit physical damage modifier on bows unless they are synthesized. Uh, what, whatever. Let's go on. Mm. The fourth point makes no sense. Mm. Okay, this one is interesting. You can use crafting methods like crafting bench mods or essences to add desirable modifiers, such as adds uh, physical damage to attacks, that's doable with content, the essence of content. Increase physical damage, increased critical strike chance for attacks. That's also something uh, that you can do possibly, but uh, yeah, let's see how it goes next. Um, dance fossils doesn't roll physical damage modifiers. That's uh, complete nonsense. Um, that's true. You can craft can have multiple crafted mods, but to be honest, that's something you do at the end of a craft, not this stage. And it didn't really describe anything good here. Uh, mm, this is also wrong, this is going to ruin your item. You need to um, lock some modifiers and just go for the bait modifier after you have locked, for example, prefix or suffixes. And this is uh, also uh, very bad. Mm, you cannot use the awakeness orb at the end of the crafting stage. Mm, you must use it at the start. So yeah, uh, those questions about crafting are just very, very bad. Uh, don't ask G ChatGPT to craft anything at all because you will get broken, you know? You will lose all your currency. Now uh, to uh, character building. How much does it cost to refound one ascendancy passive point in Path of Exile? Uh, the answer is five orbs of regret. That's correct. How many items can be equipped by a character, including weapon swaps and excluding jewels in Path of Exile? Now, the list is seems to be correct, but uh, the real number is 18 uh, because it doesn't account for the trinket, uh, the heist trinket. That's probably because a heist came out after 2021. So, yeah, the website was not trained to answer this question comfortably. This is a very common question from players. Which is the fastest way to level up your character in Path of Exile from level 99 to level 100? Pick one. 
Uh, the answer it gives is the beachhead, which was the correct answer before uh, Five Way Legion was released. But if I recall correctly, Legion was released in 2020, so it should have known that Five Way Legion is the best method uh, of leveling. Anyway, the beachhead is still a decent option if you want a really, really safe method for leveling up, but it's extremely slow right now. Uh, especially after XP gain was nerfed uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, Five Way Legion is still the gold standard for leveling a new character, especially if you can do it in a party. Um, which of these skill gems grant phasing in Path of Excel? Uh, the answer is not correct. Uh, the correct one is Divergent Dash, not Anomalous Dash. This was a hard one, to be honest. Which of these anointments for amulets grants increased mana reservation efficiency? And uh, the answer is not correct. Sovereignty uh, grants increased mana reservation efficiency. However, it gives another example, Charisma, uh, which is a passive notable that, in, that really grants increased mana reservation. So uh, it didn't recognize the right notable between the, this list, but still, it could find a, a replacement for um, the four option we provided, which is kind of nice, but not quite enough. The answer is still uh, answered incorrectly. What is the highest value of maximum elemental resistance you can get in Path of Excel? The answer is correct. It is 90%. It used to be 100% back in the days, uh, many years ago, but it was nerfed after a while because, you know, Having 100% elemental resistance <laughs> was kind of busted, right? Um, there were builds that converted physical damage taken to elemental, and this could be abused in the uh, in very wrong ways. Which of these buffs is considerable a layer of defense in Path of Excel? Elusive buff is indeed a layer of defense. Uh, it provides increased chance to evade uh, incoming attacks and also some movement speed, if I recall correctly. Uh, Onslaught, Tailwind uh, are buffs, uh, very good ones, by the way, uh, but Hindred is instead uh, a debuff that can be inflicted on you on or uh, enemies or uh, on monsters. Now, um, another question. On which life percentage does the low life condition apply in Path of Excel? And this was uh, the correct answer, 35% uh, before the last 3.20 patch. Uh, right now, the correct answer is 50%. Now, that was a hard one for ChatGPT because, again, it cannot track questions. Um, it cannot track for answers uh, after 2022, at least not properly. Which of these ailments directly affects Critical strike chance in Path of Excel. The correct answer is free, freeze in his opinion, uh, but it's not really true. It is brittle. Brittle provides some flat critical strike chance. It is very powerful. It used to provide a, ma a maximum of 10% critical strike chance. Right now it is it was nerfed to 6%, but it is still very, very powerful. Uh, now, uh, as usual, we, at the end of this uh, section, we are going to make um, some uh, a, a, an open question. Which item modifier on uh, is more important for a magic find build in Path of Excel? Increase quantity of items found or increase rarity of items found? This is a, a very common question in my Discord. Uh, quantity versus rarity is a very controversial topic for many players. Let's see how uh, it it is assessed by ChatGPT. And I must admit that the answer is rather long. I'm impressed. Mm, let's see if the answer is also correct. Uh, increase Both increased quantity and rarity are important. That's correct. But they have different effects on loot drops. And here follows an explanation. Um, if you kill a monster that drops three items with a 100% IQ modifier, it will drop six items instead of three. 
Now, that's not really the case because diminishing returns are in play, but on principle, this is what you would expect from an increased quantity modifier, right? Hmm. This can be very useful for farming low-level zones with large packs of monsters where there is a high volume of item drops. Well, that's, doesn't, that doesn't really make sense because you should aim to farm the highest level zones you can according to your build. But a popular strategy is to run low tier maps because they are easier, so it kind of makes sense in a way. Increased rarity of items found affects the quality of items found that drop from monsters and containers. This increases the chance that items that drop will be of a higher rarity. That's correct. And again, mm, this is not 100% conversion, there are diminishing returns in play. Mm, this part of the answer also makes no sense. Uh, you're always better with higher most of that state, no matter what. The effectiveness of item quantity and item rarity depends on the situation and the goal of the player. A player who is farming for valuable unique items may prioritize item rarity over item quantity, that's partially true, because they want a higher chance of finding those items, even if it, if it means getting fewer total drops. On the other hand, a player who is farming for currency or low-level items, uh, I mean low rarity, I guess, may prioritize IQ over I, uh, item rarity because they want more opportunities to find those items, even if they are of lower rarity. The answer is kind of messy, not very accurate, uh, but uh, uh, the, cons the right concepts are there. If you want to go for uniques, you go for rarity. If you want to, if you want divination cards or currency, you can go for quantity. In general, a balanced approach is the most effective for magic fine builds. This is the most important part, and it it gets it right. This means using items, passives, and skills that provide both modifiers. For example, the Ventus Gamble, that's a good example, provides both item quantity and item rarity. Um, the Ascendancy Passive Now, Ranger the Die, provides both item quantity and item rarity. That's false. I don't know where it gets that. Uh, I'm surprised by this part of the answer. In conclusion, both quantity and rarity are important. Item quantity provides more opportunity to find items. Item rarity increases the chances of finding higher quality items. The most effective magic find builds use a balanced approach to both modifiers to maximize the potential for valuable item drops. Now, the answer was quite redundant, redundant uh, on some point. It repeated um, some parts multiple times, uh, but I'm rather satisfied. Uh, it is not totally accurate, but still decent, decent enough. Uh, now, some bonus questions um, about uh, Path of Excel communities. Let's see if, we, if it knows our community. What is the Magic Find Academy Discord server for Half of Excel? Uh, it doesn't seem to recognize it, uh, but if I perform the same question again... Um, it it kind of... It kind of guesses it. Could be a Discord server the idea is discussing and sharing information about Magic Find Builds. Now, to be honest, um, I made these questions to ChatGPT GPT on uh, various days, different days, and I got different answers. Sometimes it recognized the Discord server, sometimes it didn't. And it is also true for the Forbidden Trove, but let's see if it recognizes it right now. Oh, this is a, a very bad answer. <laughs> it's worth noting that the Forbidden Trove is a term that has been associated with websites or communities that offer illegal downloads or hacks. That's completely false. The Forbidden Trove clearly doesn't do that. I think that this type of answer is due to the recent drama that was spread about TFT and some real money trading going on. Going on. In my opinion, there is no real evidence about all of these. Uh, but we shall see what happens. Uh, to be honest, this is all a bit mm, delusional, in my opinion. 
therefore with the trove offers great service for all players and despite some controversy i think it does more good than harm what is the prohibited library discord server for of excel i'm sorry but i do not have this information oh okay fine uh, so it has only partial knowledge about discord servers in general uh, a very very last question is Path of Exile a pay to win game? Discuss extensively with examples. Path of Exile is a free to play action RPG developed by Grinding Gear Games. It offers players a vast amount of content and a complex and diverse game system, making it, making it a popular game in the RPG genre. Uh, one of the concerns some players have is whether Path of Exile is a pay to win game. Uh, Pay-to-win games are those where players can gain significant advantages by spending real money on microtransactions that give them an edge over non-paying players. That's a very good definition. Um, in the case of Path of Exile, the game is generally not considered to be pay-to-win. This is because the game's monetization model is centered around cosmetic items and convenience features rather than powerful in-game advantages. That's also a very accurate answer. Players can purchase items like weapon effects, character skins, etc. There are some convenience features available for purchase, uh, purchase such as stash tabs, character slots, which can make it easier to manage inventory and multiple characters. However, these features do not provide any game advantages that would make them necessary to succeed in the game. Now, that's partially true, but uh, you must tell that if you have those currency stash tab, those special stash tab, your experience is right is uh, improving by such a lot that you are effectively gaining an advantage over time. Uh, you are farming currency more efficiently. Uh, you get less fatigue from playing. And uh, yeah, it gives an advantage. Now, how unfair that is? It is rather unfair in my opinion. But for how much it costs, I think that's reasonable. Because, you know, at the moment you need a currency stash tab, you're probably 100 hours into the game. And at this point, if a game you play, uh, if a game you play um, provided you fun for 100 plus hours, I mean, why don't you would like to spend even a few bucks on it? It seems like very greedy to me to just not purchase something for a game that you enjoy for many many hours uh, it is a free to play game and without the stash tabs they would probably lose a lot of their revenue so it's totally understandable that they want to gate some of this convenience behind a paycheck uh, in terms of gameplay Path of Excel does not have any pay to win mechanics uh, the game itemization system is based on random drops, crafting and trading. This is a very accurate definition. In conclusion, while Path of Excel offers a variety of microtransactions, they do not provide significant, significant advantages that would make the game pay to win. So yeah, that's the dominant opinion about pay to win in Path of Excel, and uh, it is very well described by ChatGPT. So, these were all the questions I prepared for ChatGPT and I'm rather impressed by uh, how sophisticated this artificial intelligence is. Despite not answering all of our questions, uh, you must agree that uh, some of the explanations uh, attempted to be very detailed and some of the answers some of the questions were also very, very hard, and it still uh, guessed the correct answer. Uh, the main limitations of this technology are the inability to find reliable sources after 2021, and also um, the mediocre ability in checking for specific informations in uh, specific websites such as the POE Wiki, POE Database, and Craft of Excel. Um, this test was rather hard in general for ChatGPT because we are asking for specific content of a specific game, uh, but uh, you can test this artificial intelligence 
on other topics and I did it extensively and I can assure you it's a very very good um, a very good artificial intelligence system um, I hope that you can have some fun with it as much as I did and uh, see you in the next video cheers